Hi there. Welcome to BA Consulting Pro and welcome to this new episode of Power BI Premium. Whenever we are using any technology in our organizations or maybe you are just wondering that how to implement a certain technology inside our organization or in the current process, then it becomes very imperative that you get to know what is the architecture of this particular technology. Architecture is going to let you know that what are the different components and how you can utilize them while you are preparing a particular design. Well, in this episode, we are going to discuss about the architecture of Power BI Premium. And if you are interested, then please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, enough of the talking, let's get started. First of all, you should know that Microsoft offers five different kinds of licenses. Out of that, two are free and embedded one. However, the main three important types of licenses are Microsoft Power BI Pro, PPU, and Power BI Premium. PPU is Power BI Premium per user. However, it is different from the Power BI Premium. And why is that? You will get to know in the upcoming slides over there. The, more, the most important factor over here is about their cost. So you should know that Power BI Pro can be availed at 9.99 per user per month. It's in USD. If you are getting Power BI Premium per user, then you have to pay 20 bucks per month. Or if you're gonna start with Premium, then you have to start it from 4,995. These, are, these prices are valid as of now, publishing this video. Maybe they can change in the future. Now, it is very good to know that which one is gonna good for you. So whenever you are talking about the architecture of any technology, then you should know that you have to get to know that which element or which technology stack you're gonna work on. Over here, we are talking about the Microsoft Power BI Premium. In the Premium, we have Premium per user and Premium. Premium is basically a dedicated capacity. However, in case of Premium per user, capacities are being shared. In order to get to know that which one you are gonna to get to know, it depends on the feature and the number of users. And how does it matter? Let me show you. First of all, we are gonna talk about the features. So on your screen now, you can see the different features. And you have to also get to know that in case of Premium per user, you don't get multi-geo support, unlimited distribution, and Power BI reports on-premise. However, other features are the same, but you should also let you know that if you are gonna go with the Power BI Premium per user, then each and every user of your organization should have Power BI Premium per user. Otherwise, they cannot access the content of Premium per user or any content shared by Premium per user capacity or the license one. So this is very, very important over here to keep this thing in your mind. You may be thinking that, okay, if I have premium per user, I can create reports, etc. I can utilize all the features shown over here, and then I can distribute my content to the other employees inside my organization or the other clicks. No, this is not true. So in order to avail or render those reports or to view that content or utilize them, they should also have premium per user. Otherwise, they cannot do that. If you want the unlimited distribution to anyone inside your organization or maybe other B2B organizations, then you need to have only premium per capacity, which is Power BI Premium. So please keep this thing in your mind. Now we are gonna talk about that, how you can decide on the number of users. So as I mentioned, if, for example, your users are less than 500, in that case, if you are gonna calculate the cost, Power BI Pro license is gonna come around 4,900. If you are gonna talk about the cost of PPU, it's gonna be about 10,000, but the cost of premium is 4,995. So you can compare the cost and then you can decide it. However, please do remember that any Power BI developer who is responsible to publish the report on Power BI service or maybe about to make some changes in terms of semantic model or any other, they must have Power BI Pro license as well. So you can calculate that cost separate. So based on that, you can decide it. Now consider another case when your total number of active users are greater than 500. Then in that case, you would find that Power BI Premium is much more suitable in this kind of situation. But that also depends on the load because Power BI Premium capacities are different. You can see that uh, we have different capacity P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. These are the different SKUs. Also guys, do remember that in the future, all the pre P capacities are gonna convert into F SQs. That means these capacity SQs, stock keeping units, 
are going to convert into FSQs and every organization has to get it through the Azure services itself. So whenever you need to get any capacity, you have to go on Azure portal there. You have to get to know. So you need an Azure subscription for your own organization if you don't have that. And that is going to probably implement it from 2025 onwards. But as of now, if you have the PSQs, they are going to work as it is. Now you can see that how many total V course you are going to get. Those are going to divide into back end and front end. Also, you will get to know the maximum memory per data set, how many direct query or live connection you can make it, what is going to be the maximum memory per query and model refresh parallelism. Based on your capacity, based on your workload, you can decide which one do you need and when do you need. In case you want to know that, okay, how much capacity you're going to require it, that depends on two factors. Number one, your workload. For example, if my data set is of 30 gigs, then in case in this case i cannot use my p1 and the reason is that as you can see that maximum limit over here is 25 gigs of memory whenever you are going to refresh the data set it's going to reserve almost half of the memory in buffer because it has to refresh the data set and that's how power we do it so in case of p1 you can have one data or individual semantic model or data set up to 12.5 gigs. This is my own experience, guys. Microsoft has different numbers, but trust me, this is gonna work. So you can keep in P1 maximum individual data set of 12.5 gigs. Although in certain cases, you can have a bit more than that as well, but this is the best practice. So always keep it according to that. You can have multiple data sets. That's not gonna be any problem, but keep in mind. In case you have a data set of around 30 gigs or your semantic model size is of 30 gigabytes, then you should go for P2 or preferably P3 node. So that's how you have to decide. Now also it depends on the number of concurrent users. So how many concurrent users are viewing or rendering the reports? If the users are a lot, for example, you have 500 concurrent users or maybe 400, then P1 is not gonna be sufficient because the memory is gonna be divided. Now question comes, how you are gonna check the workload? How you are gonna get to know, okay, how many users are logging in, how many users are using, uh, or how the capacity is being utilized among the users? It happens inside the organization that particularly due to bad practices, one user is going to use a lot of memory. Well, for that case, you have to utilize the capacity utilization matrix. Capacity utilization matrix is a free app. Nowadays, it's known as Fabric Capacity Utilization Matrix. So you can go to the app store from there, you can get it. In order to utilize it, you must have access on those particular capacities. If you don't have, you cannot get to know. In this app, you can get to know what is the CPU utilization, how many people are using it, what is the distribution among them, which data set is using the more capacity, whether there is going to be a throttled or not. For that, I'm going to make a dedicated video. I'm not going to cover into this video. So please stay tuned for that episode as well. So this is the capacity matrix utilization app, which is going to let you know about the utilization of the capacities. And after that, you can get to know we need to upgrade the capacity or not. Now, capacity workload settings are also very important whenever you are working with the premium capacities. And why is that? Because with the help of that, you can distribute the content. You can give the contributor permissions, admin permissions, how it's gonna work for the semantic models, reports, paginated reports, or maybe the data flows. You can also distribute your capacities among the backend and the front end. You can get any number of vehicles and then you can divide it accordingly. I'm gonna discuss everything in our upcoming videos, so you have to stay tuned with us. I'm just introducing this topic over here so that you would get to know, okay, how and what are the different capacities that you can change while you're working with the premium capacities. Now, the another important part is that this is available only for premium capacities, not for PPU. For PPU license, there are certain settings that are available, but not all. So there are certain settings which are different for PPU and premium capacities. Now, another important topic comes about the distribution of the content. So while using the premium capacity use, you can distribute your workload. And that's why I introduced this topic over here. So there are certain benefits that you can avail while working with the premium capacities. The very first comes that the shared nodes are at least as large as an original P3 node. And this is in case of PPU. So one thing that I didn't tell you guys about it is that whenever you are using a PPU license, you don't get a dedicated capacity for your own tenant. Rather than that, there is a capacity for the entire region where you are working on or where your data center is that, and that is being distributed among everyone. So for example, you have a pool of water that has been distributed. You are getting the premium features out of that pool, but you cannot dedicate it to yourself. It is being distributed among everyone. 
However, it is just like you're using a P3 premium capacity, even you are working with the PPU license. So you get more resources and you can avail all the high computational power, which can enhance your performance up to 16 times. So this is very important for you to know. So this is the only difference between a PPU and a premium capacity. However, there are a couple of more factors. For example, whom you can distribute the content, which I already introduced during the features of this one. And if I'm gonna move forward and then we are gonna discuss the another benefit that you might get is that whatever node your processing lands on, the placement mechanism makes sure memory remains available for your operation to complete. And this is for PPU. Within the applicable memory constraint of your capacity, you have to check the limitations for that as well. Over here, since we don't have the metrics, uh, since we don't have the capacity utilization metrics app for PPU, so you won't get to know individually where and which one you are using. So that's another benefit you would get over here using the PPU. While working with the PPU, cross workload resources contention is prevented by separating the share nodes into specialized workload groups. So that you can do it. As a result of this separation, there is no control for paginated report workloads. So as I mentioned, that you won't get a specific controls while working with the PPU, but you would get overall the premium capacity and its feature. The limitation on different capacity SQs are not based on the physical constraint in case of PPU as they were in the original version of premium. Original version of premium means I'm talking about the premium capacities. Rather, they are based on an expected and clear set of rules that the Power BI premium service enforces. For example, total capacity CPU throughput is at or below the throughput possible within the vehicles your purchased capacity has. Second can be memory consumption required for viewing and refresh operation remains within the memory limits of your purchase capacity. Now, in the new architecture, you cannot use the classic workspace for PPU. You can only use the workspace V2 version, that means the new gen workspaces. So there's a no chance that you can use that. And because of this new architecture, customer admins do not need to monitor their capacities for, sign, for signs of approaching the limit of their resources and instead are providing with clear indication when such limits are met. So what is the benefit of that? Well, this significantly reduces the, the efforts and overhead required for capacity administrator to maintain optimal capacity performance. In our next video, we are going to clearly discuss about premium per user. In this video, we discussed about the architecture of Power BI Premium, where two types of licenses are available, premium per user and premium. Premium is a dedicated capacity. However, premium per user is not a dedicated capacity. It's a capacity shared in the particular region where your tenant lies or where your data center is. There are certain differences among these two different kinds of licenses, and you should know when and how to choose which one. You should also know that there are certain limitations in terms of admin settings for PPU as compared to the premium. I hope now you are clear about what is the architecture of Microsoft Power BI and you can decide whether you should go with PPU or Power BI Premium inside your organization. If you need any more information, please do let us know in the comment section. And also, if you are looking for any training programs for Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric, then please don't forget to contact with us. Till then, keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.